Hello everyone, my name is Ben Hedges. I was born in Hong Kong. I grew up in the UK. I graduated from the Chinese language department at SOAS at the University of London. And for the past seven years, I've been producing a program about China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And today I'd like to share my opinion and that of some experts on why we need Taiwan during this global pandemic. First of all, let's take a look at the latest number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Taiwan. The island nation is one of the 20 most populated countries in the world and is less than 80 miles from China. But so far, the number of diagnosed cases of coronavirus is less than 500 and less than 10 people have died. Globally, Taiwan sits all the way down at number 100 in the rankings of how seriously countries have been affected. In late April, Taiwan even had zero new diagnosed cases six days in one week and had no local infections for 20 consecutive days. Out of the people who have had the virus in Taiwan, 39.2% have already recovered. This is higher than the global average of 24.5%. In other neighboring countries such as Japan, India and South Korea, each currently have more than 10,000 people who have been diagnosed. And speaking of Japan, our reporter in Tokyo had the opportunity to talk to some people on the street. On the one hand, you can feel the Japanese spirit. <laughs> And on the other hand, what they want to do after the epidemic is also quite special. So I guess if Disney's Mulan loses money, can be made back in Japan. Anyway, back to Taiwan. In terms of fighting the epidemic, they have also done an incredible job. After the outbreak, Taiwan's health officials haven't had a day off in three months. They have held daily press conferences to report on the situation. They also quickly prohibited mask export and purchased more machines to work overtime to produce masks at factories across the country. Whilst it has been reported that the Chinese communist regime has been manufacturing some of their N95 masks for export to other countries out of underwear, Taiwan's daily mask production has increased from 1 million to 10 million, making them the second largest mask manufacturer in the world. Taiwanese people can buy nine medical masks for less than $2 every two weeks. At the same time, they launched international assistance and donated masks to other countries such as the United States and countries in Europe. In addition, Taiwan has the number one medical health insurance system in the world according to CEO World Magazine's Healthcare Index. At the beginning of the outbreak, they established a connection between hospitals and airport customs. When people go to the hospital, after they scan their health insurance card, the doctor can immediately know the patient's record of foreign travel and make a more precise judgment. They are also the fourth country in the world to isolate virus strains and they've developed antibodies that can identify the protein that causes the virus in just 19 days. Okay, too many statistics. But basically, while so many countries have no choice but to shut down their schools and companies, Okay, this is not a funeral, it's a graduation ceremony in Japan. I mean, other countries lose their normal way of life, but most Taiwanese not only go to work and classes as usual, they can even do talk shows, play baseball games. Although, yeah, they do play in front of fake fans, but at least the cheerleaders are real. The most impressive thing is the Taiwanese police even worked with the Motion Picture Association of America to take down one of the largest pirated movie websites. So you know, in addition to their effective plans for epidemic prevention, the government is also making sure that when people do stay at home, they're only watching the official versions of programs. So if Netflix's performance in the Chinese-speaking region has improved recently, Netflix's CEO may really want to thank Taiwan. So based on these facts, we might not be surprised when the mainstream media report the Taiwan Taiwan's performance in epidemic prevention is the best in the world. Even Bill Gates, Barbara Streisand and Ricky Martin have been discussing Taiwan, so you know they're making an impression. The question left to us now is that if Taiwan has done so well, why has the World Health Organization not allowed Taiwan to join? There, there's no question that uh, there is uh, Chinese influence on the WHO, and uh, I would submit that the WHO has uh, allowed politics to override considerations of global public health. Therefore, the WHO has failed to fulfill its mandate and uh, has contributed 
significantly to the global catastrophe that we are dealing with today from a public health standpoint and all of the social and economic implications that have followed. Not only that, but the World Health Organization sometimes uses a more dramatic approach to ignore Taiwan and even levies accusations at them. Will the WHO consider Taiwan's membership? Hello? We, with the, with the I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear your question. Okay, yeah, let me, let, let me, let me repeat the question. No, so. that's okay. Let, let's move to another one then. Right, because, because I'm, I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. And if you want me to be specific, three months ago, this attack came from Taiwan. In response to the accusation from WHO Director General Dr. Tedros, Taiwan's government clarified their stance and young people also launched a fundraising campaign. In less than a day, they raised more than 600,000 US dollars and bought an advertisement in the New York Times. This caught the attention of medical experts. Taiwan should absolutely be able to join the WHO. This is absurd. The WHO should not kowtow to any country's whims or interests. It should be all countries who want to be part of the world, who are part of the world, and who are good citizens and do what they're expected to do, should be part of the WHO. And no other country should be able to X out, disallow. I mean, that's just not right. One of the world's largest independent professional medical organizations also issued an open letter calling on Dr. Tedros to allow Taiwan to participate in the WHO. One of the sentences in this letter, you say, we urge you to make such a step and not allow the WHO to become involved in any more political games. Could you talk just a little bit more about your thoughts on that? We know that uh, the World Health Organization is acting around the world, you know, together with uh, local governments. And uh, Taiwan is not recognized by the United Nations as a country. And China is uh, pushing very hard for one country policy. So I believe that WHO in the last few years are under pressure to not uh, include Taiwan in their activities, even as observers, because of the political interest to be close to China, not to go against the best interests of the government of China. And that's what I and others at the World Medical Association were naming as a political game at the WHO. But I think then when we are dealing with health and science, we do not have to include politics on that situation. Has Dr. Tedros or the WHO given you a response to the letter? Not yet. <laughs> Well, actually, this was not the first time that we have done that. We have uh, sent, uh, you know, similar letters, I believe, for the last uh, two years, in 2019 and 2018 at least. We never received a response. And a word here to my Taiwanese friends. Next time you want to advertise in a Western newspaper, why not advertise in the Epoch Times, the newspaper we are affiliated with, which is on fire. No, like literally on fire. Our printing press in Hong Kong was really set on fire by thugs who were most probably paid by the Chinese regime because of our reporting on the anti-extradition law movement in Hong Kong, human rights issues in China, and the dark side of the Chinese Communist Party. Back to Taiwan. So the mobilization power of Taiwanese is not only shown through how they help out their own people, but also in acts of kindness outward towards other countries in the world. During the epidemic, an Italian priest who's been in Taiwan for 55 years raised funds from the people of Taiwan to help Italy. He raised $5 million in Taiwan in just six days. From the above examples, I conclude that it is unreasonable for the WHO to exclude Taiwan because of politics. And it's not only unfair to Taiwan, but also to the rest of the world. Because without Taiwan, not simply that we can't drink bubble tea or eat the mythical 18-fold Xiaolong Bao at Ding Tai Fung anymore, but under the current crisis, there is a need for forces of honesty and kindness. At the end of last year, Taiwan health officials wrote an email to warn the WHO of this crisis, quickly launching their own national epidemic prevention operations and assisting the world. Well, it, it's clear that when the WHO ignored Taiwan's warnings, they were playing politics. Because if you read the letter from Taiwan, they're not only telling the WHO that they have evidence of, you know, this virus, this unknown pneumonia spreading in China at that time, and that people have to be quarantined, they have to be kept separate. Now, you know, Taiwan is suggesting that by saying that people had to be kept, you know, isolated, that itself was evidence of human-to-human -human transmission. WHO said, well, you didn't technically say human-to-human -human transmission. <laughs> 
right? Of course, you know, at the time the Chinese Communist Party was saying otherwise and they were repeating it. And it's again, it's obvious that the WHO is just playing politics. They don't want to let Taiwan into the WHO. They don't want to share information with them because doing so would validate Taiwan as a country. And if they're playing in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party, they can't do that. In fact, Taiwan's one of the great success stories with regard to combating the pandemic and who sought to warn the WHO about what was happening and that too was ignored or suppressed. And in fact, the WHO was not conveying the danger of closing borders early enough and said travel was fine. And this is already when we knew about the danger of the pandemic. So there's a culpability here too, regrettably, by, as I say, the leadership of the WHO. WHO does otherwise important and will continue to do important work in safeguarding the health of the international community. But here the leadership has to bear accountability as well. So not having Taiwan is just like the Fellowship of the Ring without Legolas. For example, their doctors have designed an aerosol box which is not patented and is free for use by medical staff worldwide. Their engineers have designed a mask map to let everyone know where masks can be bought. Taiwanese professors led students to participate in the Build for COVID-19 Global Hackathon and they developed a rapid AI detection system which is an e-alert system for automatically detecting pneumonia from chest x-rays and became one of the finalists. I certainly think Taiwan knows exactly what it's doing. It has the expertise and the knowledge. So regardless of whether it was China or another country, the people in Taiwan are smart. They have a smart government. They know exactly how to read a lot of these different issues, but especially when it was coming from China. They immediately put into play all of the necessary safety precautions to protect their people. And they didn't trust anybody else's information. They did their own research, their own investigation, and they have done extremely well. I believe there's only been nine deaths in Taiwan, and that, that's remarkable. It's a real tribute to the government, to President Tsai, and to the smart people that they are in Taiwan and their commitment to protecting their people. Not only Taiwan can help, but Taiwan is helping. On the other hand, in this plague, the CCP's cover-up caused numerous infections and deaths worldwide. The autocracy and dictatorship of the communist system caused this global disaster. In the past, the CCP often propagated that the Chinese are not suitable for democracy, but the existence of Taiwan directly refutes this claim. Although many Taiwanese now prefer to be called Taiwanese rather than Chinese, but still, Taiwan is the only democratic country in the Chinese-speaking world. They had a presidential election this year, and before the election, the CCP banned Chinese people from traveling to Taiwan in order to interfere with the election, hoping to threaten Taiwan by tanking the tourism industry. But Taiwan still broke records with more than 8 million votes for President Tsai Ing-wen, who refused to compromise with the Chinese Communist Party and was still elected. This travel ban actually became a blessing in disguise. With reduced immigration to Taiwan from China, this no doubt reduced the spread of coronavirus in Taiwan. So if you want mainland China to be more transparent and more democratic in the future, we should support Taiwan this small island of freedom to influence China. In the past month, even though the epidemic was intense, Taiwan still did not forget the spirit of democracy. A restaurant owned by a Hong Kong protester who was forced to flee to Taiwan opened in Taipei. When the owner of Causeway Bay Books, Lam Wing Ki, who was once kidnapped in China, opened a new bookstore in Taiwan, he was attacked by thugs and splashed with red paint before the store opened. But on opening day, Taiwan sent police to protect the bookstore. His books also sold very well in the past few years, because of the suppression of the CCP, Taiwan has continually lost diplomatic relations with other countries and has been rejected by the WHO and other international organizations. But now, this once lonely island is marching towards the international stage with an unexpected and amazing gesture and is doing its best to help the world. I didn't see it coming, to be honest. The, the Chinese Communist Party is being discredited in every part of the world. The organizations that have suppressed information, like the WHO, are exposing themselves and showing the world what happens when you believe false information from the Chinese Communist Party. And Taiwan is coming out and showing itself to be a very, you know, valuable player in the international community. They're shipping face masks, they're, you know, engaged with the world, they're actually playing a positive role in helping inform people about this virus and giving a model for fighting against it or, you know, preventing this virus from spreading further. And so good for them, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great development in my opinion. 
Okay guys, that is it for today's video. What did you think? Please leave your comments below. And if you want to see more programming about the pandemic, etc., why not check out some of the programs by our colleagues at, including Crossroads, hosted by Josh Phillip, as well as China in Focus, China Uncensored by Chris Chappell, and American Thought Leaders. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Oh, wow.